Coming up on Retiring Well with Michael Reese. How far away might you, uh, might your returns be from that 6% average? You know, would you be close to that 6% every year or might there be a lot of variance? I have seen people where they have the same average return used every year. They think they're gonna be good, but when you run this simulation, you find, yeah, you think you're good, but there's only about a 63% chance that this is really gonna all work out. Can make sure too that we're mapping out a plan so that they can see, okay, yeah, that money's gonna be there for you for the next 30 plus years of your retirement. Retiring Well with Michael Reese, helping you make smart decisions with your money so you can live a better life. Today is the day you can take back control of your money. Retiring Well with Michael Reese, where we believe your best is yet to come. Welcome to Retiring Well. I'm your host, Michael Reese, and we've got a great show lined up this week. We are talking about financial jargon. In other words, what the heck are we financial people saying when we're talking to you? I mean, you ever feel like this? You, know, you go in to see your financial advisor and you walk out after the meeting, you almost feel like, gosh, I'm, I'm a little more confused now than when I got there. In other words, you ever feel like sometimes financial people talk in words and phrases that you're not real sure? I mean, you think you know what they're talking about, but you're not sure? Well, that's what this show's about, is to help you better understand what the heck is your guy or gal telling you? So here's a great example. This is where I'll start. It's with this phrase, standard deviation. I know, sounds pretty fancy, right? When I say standard deviation, I even feel smart saying that. But in reality, it's a real simple measuring stick and it's something that you need to understand. Now, I wanna paint the picture for you. Whenever you talk to a financial advisor, what are they always saying? They're always telling you, hey, we need to increase your returns and reduce your risk. We need to diversify and have asset allocation so that we can, at the end of the day, increase returns and reduce risk. Well, that's great. It sounds terrific. I wanna do that. Gosh, I wanna increase returns. I wanna reduce risk. Who doesn't want to do that? But what does it all really mean? And normally, what are they doing? They're always looking at returns, 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 returns. That's what they talk about. What they don't talk about much, though, is the reducing risk part. And standard deviation, there's that word again, standard deviation is the statistical measurement that measures how much risk you're taking. Okay, well, in order to understand standard deviation, we have to first understand risk. And when I say the word risk, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, gosh, I know what risk means. Risk means how much money could, could you lose in a single year? You know, if you have 100,000 invested, what's your risk? Could you lose 10,000, 20,000, 30,000? I understand that. When you think about risk, you think about how much money you could lose. Ah, here's a big disconnect right here because when the financial world talks about risk, they're talking about something else altogether. They're talking about standard deviation. What the financial world is doing is they're saying, well, wait a minute. Let's imagine that your average return is say, oh, I don't know, let's say 6%. When the financial world measures risk, and standard deviation, they're asking the question, how much variance away from that 6% average might you experience over the course of a year? So if, you're, if your average is six, are you gonna be, I don't know, plus 32 and, you know, plus 30 and minus 30? You know, how wide is that, that range? Or are you gonna be plus 10 or minus 10? Now, what's really important here is, you, and, and again, what does this all mean to you? It means the, the ideal number you're looking for. You, you wanna go ask your financial advisor, hey, what's the standard deviation on my portfolio? The ideal answer is zero. Zero, you want a big old goose egg if you can get it. The most efficient 
portfolio is one with a standard deviation or a risk of zero. Of course, you only find that in CDs. In order to make some money, you gotta have some risk, you have some range of potential returns over the course of a year. But the big question though is, well still, how wide is your road? How much, how wide, how much risk, how much variance are you taking in your portfolio? Because the more variance you take, the less efficient your portfolio. Now here's a little secret for you. Here's a little secret for you. One of the things you do is if you take your standard deviation number, okay, here's a little math equation for you, and you multiply it by six. Say so take your standard deviation times six. That tells you how wide or how much variance you might experience over the course of a year. You don't want your standard deviation in retirement to be more than about five. That's about the most you want it to be, five because that would give you a range of about 30% plus, you know, 15% on either side of your average. No more than five. I think a very interesting experiment for you would be to ask your advisor, hey, what's my standard deviation? If it's more than five, ha, might be a good time to talk to a new advisor. Centennial Wealth Advisory, your independent retirement planning specialists, now in three convenient locations in Northern Michigan, 818 Red Drive in Traverse City, 3890 Charlevoix Avenue in Petoskey, and 3687 Old 27 South in Gaylord. Contact us at 888-608-5825 or visit send-wealth.com to schedule your no-obligation complete retirement review at any of our Northern Michigan locations, Traverse City, Petoskey, or Gaylord. Centennial Wealth Advisory, your best is yet to come. Hi, I'm here with Larry Flynn. He's one of the advisors at Centennial Wealth Advisory. And Larry, I know you and the other advisors, uh, they do a lot of uh, public discussions, a lot of public seminars on financial matters regarding retirement planning. Uh, can you share with our viewers a little bit more about you know, what do you talk about and um, what, kinds, what kinds of topics can they expect to hear uh, you speak on? Mike, we, we put on a one hour presentation and I'll talk about a number of various topics from taxes um, to the new fiduciary standard of care, just a number of things, things that we believe are critical in making somebody's retirement vision a reality. So this is all about getting them good information in today's world on a variety of retirement topics. Now, uh, a lot of these events, I, I know I know these folks are out there watching us right now. I know what they're thinking. They're thinking, you know, Larry, I've been to these before, and usually it's really nothing more than someone trying to sell me something. Uh, can you maybe respond to uh, people that think uh, about that? Yeah, I'm really surprised by that. I hear that all the time. Hey, I went to these before. They were they hard sold me. They were trying to pressure me into um, making an appointment with them. Um, that's not what we're about. You know, just want to give them some good information. Um, if they see something um, from the presentation that they might want to hear more about, then great, we'd love to meet with them. But we're not going to meet with somebody that doesn't want to meet with us. We're not going to hard sell them into happen to come to our office. Yeah, why waste time chasing down people who don't want to talk to you anyway, right? right. Well, that sounds great. So, Larry, um, I know you do these throughout all of northern Michigan. Uh, for those folks watching that think, you know, hey, I'd, I'd like to attend that. Uh, does it cost anything, by the way? So they're free. So, so they think, okay, it's free to go. I'd love to go, learn a little bit, maybe have some nice, a nice dinner. How do they find out more information, like you know, when these events are and how to register? What do they need to do? Well, they can call the number they've been seeing on the on the screen during the program. Okay. Um, they can visit the website. Um, www.sen-wealth.com. All right. Yep. So website, phone number, either way they can get all the information they need. Is that right? There you go. All right. There you go, folks. Uh, sounds to me like it'd be worth your time to attend. You've got nothing to lose. And uh, hey, maybe you'll find out some great information that helps you uh, make your retirement better. Thanks, Larry. Today in Chalk Talk, we are talking about 
standard deviation and exactly how it works. And by the way, as you can tell, I'm, I'm clearly not an artist. This is kind of the best I can do. But what I've drawn here is something called a bell curve. And you can kind of see the shape of it here. It's shaped a little bit, you can see right here, shaped like a bell. That's why they call it a bell curve. And in our first segment there, we talked about something called standard deviation. And why is that important? Well, for you to understand why it's important, you need to understand the visual of it, which is called a bell curve and what's going on. So here is statistically how things work. Now, remember, we're talking statistics here. And whenever this whole bell curve concept was designed, it was designed to measure physical things like, you know, how tall are uh, our people in the United States? And, you know, here's the average and here's how much they vary. But in this case, we're using this concept to measure markets. And so let's imagine you come into our office, you know, you watch the show, you say, oh, I want you guys to run an analysis for my retirement. So you call us, you come on in and visit, which I encourage that you do. And when you come in, we put your portfolio in Morningstar and we learn, oh, look at this. You, your portfolio should average about a 6% return. Okay, how's that? 6%, that's the average. This middle line right here is the average return. So let's imagine that's your average. Now the question is, how far away might you, uh, might your returns be from that 6% average? You know, would you be close to that 6% every year or might there be a lot of variance? And let's imagine that Morningstar says, you have a standard deviation in your portfolio of, and I'll pick an even number, 10%, 10%. So let's say they say your standard deviation is, there it is right there, 10%. Now, is that good or bad? What does that mean to you? Well, here's what it means. Here's what it means. It means that one, two, three, it, there are three standard deviations that measure important points. And here's what they mean. This first level right here, see these two levels right here in green, this first level? That represents what's gonna happen 67% of the time. So here's what that means to you. 60% of the years, about two thirds of the time, you would experience a return that is 6% plus or minus one standard deviation or 10. So maybe minus four, plus 16. So about two thirds of the years, you're gonna be between minus four and plus 16, which isn't bad, that's, that's fine. Now, two standard deviations away, that's 95% of the time. So what they're saying there is they're saying, okay, 6% plus two of these, 20%. So 95% of the years you should be plus 26, minus 6%, minus 20, minus 14. That's what that means. And then three standard deviations. Well, this is 99% of the time. So 99% of the years, you should be plus 6% plus three standard deviations is 30 plus 36 or minus 24. How's that? Make sense to you? So here is the problem in the financial industry. These, the financial industry has what is called fat tails, meaning only 1% of the time you should have a return of, a return lower than that. In other words, you should go outside of that or above this number. But fat tails means no, in the financial industry, instead of this happening once every 100 years, it happens more like once every 10 years. In other words, we have more risk than we think we do. When I talk about your standard deviation should be no more than 5%, no more than five, what that really means in this example is if your average return is 6%, your best year should really be more like plus 21, but your worst year, eh, maybe minus 11 that would be more appropriate for retirement planning. Now the question is, which one is you? Where are you? 
That's why you want to come in and visit with us so you can find out. Hi, I'm sitting here with Larry Flynn. Thanks for being here, Larry. Thank you, Mike. He's one of the advisors at Centennial Wealth Advisory. And, and folks, uh, as you may know by now, we certainly invite you to come visit with us. It's absolutely free to get a second opinion on your retirement planning. And I think it's important to get a second opinion from someone who's a specialist when it comes to retirement planning. And Larry, I'm sure they're wondering, you know, if they pick up the phone and they call and come visit with you, what kind of a, what can they expect? What's that experience like? Well, Mike, they can expect not to get hard sold, okay? We're gonna greet them warmly. Um, we're gonna sit down and talk to them a little bit about their, maybe their story, you know, where they're from, where they grew up, how they met their spouse, you know, what they're dreaming of doing once they get soon to be retired or retired. Kind of what are their goals, right? Yeah, what are your goals? Um, we're gonna talk to them a little bit about who we are, what we do, show them how we do things, especially dealing in the market realities we find ourselves in today. Got it, so essentially, they're coming in, you're learning a little bit about what's important to them, what their goals are, what they're trying to accomplish. I'm sure you're taking a look at what they're doing so far. You maybe share a little bit about you, and it's, it's just in a very relaxed atmosphere. That's right. Uh, and, and there's no cost to do this, is that correct? No cost, no cost. All right, so folks, there you go. I mean, it sounds very simple, very easy, very laid back. Uh, there's no reason for you not to just pick up the phone, call the number on the screen, come visit us, Get that second opinion. You'd be glad that you did. Welcome back. This week we're talking about financial jargon. And at the end of the day, we're just trying to help you better understand the conversations you have with your financial advisor. So I'm getting ready to throw another one at you. There's this phrase out there called Monte Carlo simulation. Ooh, that sounds fun. Monte Carlo. I feel like I'm getting ready to go to, uh, was it Monte Carlo or Monaco, you know, the out in the south, on the Mediterranean in south of France area. That sounds really cool and fun and interesting. And, but, but what does it mean? I, I mean, what the heck does that mean? Well, here's what it means. You want to know what Monte Carlo is, and it has a huge impact, or it could have a huge impact, on the confidence that you have in your retirement planning. So, what's going on here? Well, whenever people do retirement planning, it's very common, and maybe you do this, maybe your advisor does this, but it's very common that what happens is you pick a rate of return, and then you apply that rate of return every year. So you might say, okay, imagine I earn 5% a year. Will my money last? And then you start applying all kinds of spreadsheets, or maybe your financial advisor does. They apply all these spreadsheets based on a 5% average rate of return. But what are they doing? They're saying, you're going to earn 5% this year, 5% next year, 5% the year after that, and every year thereafter, you're always going to earn 5 And then they show you how your retirement will be just absolutely wonderful. Or maybe you've calculated that yourself. Well, there's one little problem with that. When's the last time you've seen your accounts are in the exact same rate of return every single year? That's right, never, because that's not how markets work. You don't earn the same rate every single year. And the problem is that averages are very deceptive. You know, as a, you know the old adage, right? You can put you know, one foot in a bucket of boiling water and one foot in a bucket of ice water and you know, on average you're doing good, but neither foot's happy, right? So the same holds true with your uh, investments, your retirement. Some years you have good years, some years you have not so good years. And what happens if you, if you have too many not so good years in a row, these averages can kill you. And what happens is you think you're doing great because you're averaging five, but it, it just doesn't work out. So what the uh, financial world has done is they've created something called Monte Carlo simulation. This is used in a lot of areas outside of finance, but essentially what Monte Carlo does is it applies an average return, but it adds another factor. It adds in your variance. We talked about this earlier in the show, your standard deviation. And it says, okay, well, how much of a range of returns might you have? And then let's do this. Let's randomly plot different returns over the rest of your life. 
so that you average that five we've been talking about, but it's you know dispersed amongst these various average, you know, across this this range that you might anticipate. So that's what it is. That's kind of what it does. And and the idea is to give you a more realistic assumption of well, is is this all going to work out? But they don't do it just one time because that's not super helpful. Usually what they'll do with these uh, Monte Carlo, these programmers, they'll do it like a thousand times. So what they do is they have a thousand different simulations of what your life is going to look like uh, from a return and, and standpoint over the years. And the idea is they're trying to figure out what is the probability that this is all going to work out for you, right? What's the probability? Now, why do you care? Why is this super important? I have seen people where they have the same average return used every year. They think they're going to be good, but when you run this simulation, you find, yeah, you think you're good, but there's only about a 63% chance that this is really going to all work out. What you want to do is you want to have this simulation run and do it the right way. You want to make sure it's not crazy assumptions. Do it the right way. You want to see 80, 90% success rates. Now, this is something that you know, we do in our offices, of course. I would invite you to come in. Let us run that for you. It's free. Let's find out if you are positioned for success with your retirement. It's your retirement. How will you live it? How will you be remembered? To take me on vacation. Will you be there for my ball game? Will you teach me your values? You'll be able to play with me. Oh, help me go to college. How will I remember you? Have the retirement you dream about. Contact us today. Centennial Wealth Advisory, your independent retirement planning specialists, now in three convenient locations in Northern Michigan, 818 Red Drive in Traverse City, 3890 Charlevoix Avenue in Petoskey, and 3687 Old 27 South in Gaylord. Contact us at 888-608-5825 or visit send-wealth.com to schedule your no-obligation complete retirement review at any of our Northern Michigan locations, Traverse City, Petoskey, or Gaylord. Centennial Wealth Advisory, your best is yet to come. All right, thanks for coming back. This is John Torbett and Art Canfield, financial advisors here with Centennial Wealth Advisory in Northern Michigan. And on today's show, uh, Art, we're going to be talking a little bit more about uh, financial jargon and what that looks like, because it seems like all the time people are coming in and, and we, we usually get to hear, hey, I actually understood what you guys were talking about today, and that, that was helpful. So right. fill me in a little bit more on what, what we're talking well, about. Well, there's here. nothing worse to walk into any business in something you don't really fully understand and have somebody talk, I'll say, above your head or just throw yeah. these terms out, all this stuff that you don't understand, and, and the person is talking a mile a minute, and, and they I don't know if they either are doing it intentionally or they're thinking you're understanding you're not. Sure. I mean, liken it to like going into, um, you know, maybe an auto repair service, and they're telling sure. you that you need this, this, and this done to repair your engine, and, you know, if you're not in the business, you're not going to know what that means, and ultimately, you know, kind of an uninformed mind isn't always going to make a decision. So, you know, here at Centennial Wealth, I think we take great pride in trying to speak at a level that everybody can understand and, and ultimately explain things in plain English because we want people to have to be very educated on what they have, why they have it, the advantages and the disadvantages of what that and, and getting to a place where they're comfortable with, uh, with what they have and in their plan that they have. Um, and, and I think that's huge art is, is the education first approach where we want to make sure that they're that they're understanding, you know, what this looks like and make sure too that we're mapping out a plan so that they can see, okay, yeah, that money's going to be there for you for the next 30 plus years of your retirement and and not 
overcomplicate things, which, which tends to happen, I think, a lot in our industry, and that's not something that, that we want. And we, we recognize we're not, they're not going to understand you know, everything r right up front, um, but we want to make sure that they're, they're clear on what that looks like, and then as time moves along, continue to make sure that they're clear on that. Right, so. right. Because it's easy for advisors or us to sit across there and talk about alpha and beta and standard deviation and you know, Monte Carlo analysis and all this sort of stuff, when at the end of the day, usually somebody just wants to understand what they have and w what the outcome is going to be, what the probability of success is going to be. And, and we still do all that sort of stuff behind the scenes because that's important stuff, sure. important analysis and stuff to do. But it, it can be portrayed in a way that's much simpler to understand and much more um, just understandable. Um, I like it a, a situation I had um, a couple come in and talk to us. Oh, gosh, it's probably been a month or two ago now. And, and they had, were with an advisor that was just, he always wanted to talk directly to the husband at this really really high level. And it was actually the wife that actually had all the assets in her 401k. Mm -hmm. And all she was, she's, I just want to understand this. I just, I want to retire. I want to have a plan. I just want to understand it. And her advisor would never really address that with her. Sure. And it comes back to just having a relationship and talking to somebody the way they can understand it. It's, you know, usually people appreciate that. And like you said, yeah. you know, over and over we hear the comments, oh, I, I finally get it. After all these years, I finally get it. Yeah. And, and you want to have that because, you know, many situations, you know, husband and wife, it, one tends to be, I'll say, the, the primary financial person, right? Sure. Whether it's the wife or the husband, it can be either or, where they take care of the bank accounts, they deal with the investments. But if that person suddenly passes away, where does that leave the other person? And it's really important to be able to be able to connect with that person and have them have at least a general understanding of kind of what they have, where things are at, who to talk to um, if something happens. Well, and that's what makes me think of, and unfortunately in this business, especially more recently, we've lost a few clients and, and where, where in their case it was the husband that handled the majority of the financial planning and assets, but we'd built a, a strong relationship over the, the past 10 years. And so um, the, the, the wife was very comfortable with us and, and how, our, how we were approaching her retirement plan and made sure that, that you're gonna be okay and that, that those assets are protected. So. Right, right. Yeah, because we've definitely seen some cases that were train wrecks where we kind of inherited that train yes. wreck after the fact. And, and that's not a situation anybody wants to be in. We've seen basically multi-millionaire, uh, you know, surviving spouses believe that they're poor because they just don't know where things are at and what, what it, where things are. Right, yeah, you're exactly right, Art. So, so yeah, we appreciate you tuning in today. And if there's certain things that we were talking about today that may be, may be on the top of your mind, we welcome you to, to give us a call and we're happy to sit down and, and talk a bit further with you. Thanks again, and we'll talk to you again soon. Bye.